Hey Danny, what's happening today? Hey Trevor! Danny, do you remember when we unboxed the 1977 AMC Pacer panel van and we found those really cool Tony Paco decals inside? Yeah, I remember that. In fact, that model kit is right there. Well, today I have another endorsed 1970s model car that we can take a look at today. Really? And what is that? It's the 1978 Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup Model Kit by Ravel. Um, who was Billy Carter? Well, Danny, Billy Carter was Jimmy Carter's brother, and Jimmy Carter was the President of the United States back in the 70s. And they also had this service station as well, and currently this service station is serving as a museum for the Carters. Oh, that sounds cool. Well, Danny, I'm not going to lie to you. Billy Carter, he loved to drink his beer. And in fact, a brewing company named Fall City Brewing made him a special beer called Billy Beer, which lasted from 1977 until the factory folded in 1978. And according to some old news media, the beer was awful. But I've watched a few videos on YouTube about Billy Beer. And uh, some people have been opening up 43-year-old Billy Beer cans and giving them a drink. Ew! That's worse than eating 45-year-old canned dog food. And apparently it tastes much like cream soda, actually the orange flavor of uh, cream soda, so orange cream soda. So that's uh, quite interesting. So with all this out of the way, let's actually see what this model kit looks like. Billy Carter was a pretty popular guy, actually. He appeared on Hee Haw and at one point made $300,000 more than Jimmy Carter by renting himself out for promotions, stock car races, and the world's belly flopping contest in Vancouver, British Columbia, where he joined in. Now, one thing you can see in the background of this picture is the Billy Carter service station sign, and there's the building itself. All of this is still in existence today. Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup came out in 1978 by Ravel, and here we have this write-up, which I will leave in the description box down below so that you can read it on your own spare time. This is an unassembled plastic model kit, which includes a detailed custom chassis and suspension, simulated wood push bumpers and stake sides, and Goodyear Wrangler RT tires. Along with the mentioned features, we also have a step-side bed with fenders and opening tailgate, chromed hay step bumper and custom taillights, dual chrome truck style mirrors and CB antennas, chrome Jackman 8-spoke wheels, detailed interior with Motorola CB radio, opening hood and Chevy 350 V8 engine, colorful decals including Billy Carter's CB handle and favorite quotations, dual chrome vertical exhaust stacks, two chrome air horns, five clearance lights, and two jerry cans, floor jack, two spare tires, three batteries, cases of oil and soft drink cans, <laughs> Billy beer cans maybe, and battery cables. And now let's pull the lid off this model kit and actually see what's inside here. Maybe a case of Billy beer. Now, now this is a model I'm borrowing from my good friend James and as you can see somebody has put it all in Ziploc bags which was quite nice. So there's the instructions. Here we've got the plastic components in their original bags. There's the truck body. There's those cool wheels, or tires, I should say. A lot of pieces in this, actually. Quite neat to see. It looks like a lot of them came off the parts tree. Spare tires, I do believe. And then there's all that nice chrome in there. Wow. Windshield and back glass. Even more components and a differential and a steering wheel. So inside this model kit, there's actually some really weird offers. Like here, you see there's one for the Ravel Modelers Club, which wasn't too weird. I mean, you could mail away for that. But, but take a look at this thing here. Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup Special. Uh, you can get a t-shirt and an iron-on patch and this poster. And what it says here is, Brother Billy Carter says, be your own man. That's Billy and he ain't apologizing. Far from it. And for his good old boys, we've got these new posters, t-shirts, and so on patches. Get yours today. What a strange offer. So as we look at these instruction sheets, we can see the pretty much the typical 1970s Ravel paperwork in here. And there it says Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup. And these are the little pictures of what we need to know before we build our model kit. 
This is the uh, standard panels we've got, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But down here on the bottom, it says Billy Carter's truck was built by RVI in Torrance, California. Now, as we take a closer look at the engine in here, you can see it's kind of a straightforward type, almost a snap together in a weird way. You've got your right and left hand side engine block and transmission. And then you've got your intake manifold and cylinder heads as one piece. There's a little tiny air cleaner goes on top there. And then we've got our valve covers. And in the second panel, we can see our exhaust manifolds popping on the side with our fan belt, pulley and alternator, and then our clutch powered fan. The rear axle and differential are very straightforward. It's basically a one piece with little knobs on the end for attaching your wheels. And then we've got the back of the differential popping in into place. Panel four shows our undercarriage going together. You can build this either stock or custom, which I do believe is just higher rear springs in the back. So we've got our axle in the front, a beam style axle. And then we've got our front springs, leaf springs and shock absorbers, as well as our frame and in the back, some more leafs and shocks and our rear differential. And there's a custom version there with different springs, I do believe. Yeah, basically quite simple. Step five and six shows the engine going into place and then the side exhaust dumps being glued in the side as well as the drive shaft being attached. Panel 7 shows the interior going together, which is just a bucket really. Seats are molded in place, so you get a steering wheel with the steering column. You get the uh, CB, or is it the clutch or the CB radio? Not too sure. The dashboard and the floor shifter, and then that entire interior drops right onto this floor pan. Panel 9 shows painting the inside of our cab here, and then the window and windshield drop into place, and the back of the cab is separate and glues right on there. Panel 10 shows our cab going down onto our interior and onto our frame. Panel 11 shows our front and rear wheels. There's different tire sizes, so the narrow ones are in the front and the wider tires are in toward the back. Panel 12 shows our wheels going into place, so you just put the wheels onto those pins on the axles and then there's a cap that goes right in the center. Be careful not to get glue on the cap onto the wheel or else it won't turn. Panel 13 is showing our Chevy grill going in place as well as the wooden front bumper. And then on the roof we have all these nice lights and there's our hood going into place. Now panel 14 shows the box of our truck going together. Here we've got this really cool floor pan which has all those uh, oil cans and uh, Maybe some of that Billy beer going in there. I don't know. I'm just a dog. And uh, so there's the front of our cab. There's our opening tailgate and the mechanisms for the tailgate, as well as the rear turn signal lenses. Panel 15 is showing a gas tank going up underneath the truck bed, as well as the fenders gluing on the side. And there's those wooden slats going in there. And then the entire bed drops onto the back of the truck, where we've got this really nice chrome bumper. And then there's some of Billy Carter's decals on the back for bumper stickers and whatever else. Now there's a lot of components that go in this truck. So here we have these two piece tires, which were the white plastic ones you saw. And then we've got fuel tanks and air horns and then side exhausts up here, just like on that uh, Dodge truck, the little red truck. Panel 17 and 18 show the rest of the items going into the bed. We've got these neat little steps here, as well as our side mirrors. And then here we've got a two-piece fire extinguisher, and we've got a floor jack, and then there's more decals and license plates and everything else. Really, really cool stuff. Now the first thing we can look at is the Chevy cab, and unfortunately, this was actually broken in the bag. Because you can see here along these posts that somebody actually tried to glue it together. Let's see if the camera can zoom in there. See a nice crack down there. Now this was not me. There is also a cracked post in here. So I do believe this is quite a bit of a weakness to this kit as it appears. And you can see that the roof is actually leaned over quite a bit. So I don't know James, I don't know who did that to you. <laughs> At any rate, there's some old marks up underneath in the wheel wells, as well as in the top of the roof. Now, hopefully the glass can get it all back together, but there are some unique features underneath here on the top of those wheel arches, like the windshield washer and the battery molded in place, windshield washer bottle, I should say. There's your brake master cylinder and a whole bunch of other little goodies. 
Overall, I don't think it's too bad for a 70s kit. There's also some detail in there in the radiator, a bit of the mesh, but overall very simplistic. Now this next parts tree includes our fenders as well as the pickup truck bed and the back of the bed. There's our bumper and the back of the cab as well as our interior panel here. And on this side there's not very many mold marks or anything like that. So if we just turn this over you can see that that's where all the mold marks are hiding. Uh, there's our bed with the rails in there which is quite nice but there's mold marks up on the top. Fortunately enough there's nothing in that cab bed so that's a good sign. I don't know, looks pretty good for the vintage of this thing. So here's our interior and again you can see that big bench seat in there. And we've got the three pedals underneath as well as the little boot for our gear shift. There's not much detail up on the sides there. But you know overall when this thing is all put together I'm sure it'll look pretty decent. Our next parts tree consists of two components for our Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup, and that is the custom floor bed and the Chevy hood. So let's just take a look at this hood for a moment. You can see the nice vent up in here, which looks pretty awesome. And then underneath there's four mold marks. There's no matting or anything under here, it's very flat. But on the top it looks great. Now there's the floorboard in here, and as you can see we've got our three batteries stocked on top of each other. There's also a nice set of jumper cables, and the wooden floor, and of course our Billy Beer, I mean uh, Coca-Cola cases. <laughs> I wonder if this pickup truck has actually become anything else. I'll have to look at the uh, scale mates for sure. And then we've got mold marks underneath, but I don't think that'll be too much a problem. So overall, this is, again, quite excellent on one side, but on the other, eh, not, not too, too uh, detailed. Our next parts tree contains the frame, dashboard, and some of our springs, as well as our little CB radio there. So a lot of these parts have fallen off the frame, unfortunately. But there you can see our nice dashboard in there. It looks like a real Chevy truck of the era. And then there's our springs. I can see that the CB radio is molded in underneath, and then that's just the receiver end of it. So again, not badly done. Looking at the frame, we have the nice floor pan under there. A lot of good detail. Again, a lot of mold marks in, in a lot of places that you really don't want mold marks. Overall though, not bad. A couple of sink marks up front here in this area, which you can always fill with uh, to me a spot putty or something like that. But I would say, you know, again, for the vintage, this is not too bad. So here's our next parts tree, and again, there's a lot of loose parts around. But overall, they are not bad. You know, I'm starting to think this truck sort of reminds me of one of the Tom Daniels model kits with its simplicity and everything. Because there's our engine block, there's quite a bit of good detail on here. But it does look really slick and smooth, much like the Tom Daniels kits. And there we have our radiator with the nice grill and everything on it. Uh, what else is in here? There's our drive shaft, our belts and pulleys, the opening tailgate. Interesting, it doesn't have a Chevrolet or anything stamped into the tailgate like most of them do. There's our fan with the clutch, and this is the top roof panel with all those little lights. And there's quite a bit of flash on here and mold marks underneath. So if you're building this, you got to get rid of those so it fits nicely on the top of your cab. And then for the additional parts that fell off, there's our engine as well as our gas tank for up underneath that truck bed. One of the exhaust headers came off. And then uh, there's our front axle. And it's interesting to note that the actual connecting uh, tie rod in there is molded onto the axle itself. So that's really cool. And there's the top of our engine, much like one of the Johan promos back in the day. Again, very uh, simplistic stuff, but I do believe once it's all together, this should look quite amazing. Our next parts tree includes some two piece Goodyear custom wide tread tires, as well as our floor jack and the stake bed sides. And as you can see, the detail on these parts actually excels because there is some nice rivets in here, as well as wood grain, and then all the letters are apparent on the sides of these tires, and the floor jack looks pretty good. A couple of mold marks underneath, but overall I do believe this is quite one of the best pieces in this entire kit. 
Our remaining white parts are in this little bag, and I do believe I will leave them in there, just uh, so I don't lose them on James, because that wouldn't be good. So there's our rear axle, and as you can see again, it's all one piece, except for the back of the case. And then we've got our GM-type steering wheel, which again, I do believe this one is more of a custom steering wheel though, but overall quite nice indeed. Here's our chrome components on the Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup. And as you can see, they really do have really awesome looking Jackman 8-spoke mag wheels on the back here. The grill is hollow so that it will show right through the truck. So remember to paint that wall in behind flat black or semi-gloss. Look at that bumper. That's got some really nice texture on there. Again, there's the top of those cans that go in those cases. The two-piece fire extinguisher. There's the center caps for those wheels. Very nicely done. The handle for the jack with a little release as well. Awesome looking stuff. I would say this is the best looking chrome tree that I've ever seen for a pickup truck. And then we also have our little steps off the side for that nice cab. So again, very nice detail work by Ravel. Here we have our window glass components. And as you can see, these are molded in that smoke colored plastic. What you can't really see is there are a few scratches on here, so you need to wax that up. And a bit of flash off the side on these side vent windows. And then here we've got the back glass, again connected with a little bit of a bridge work up in there. Overall though, for what it is, I don't think it's too, too bad. Next up we have these amazing Goodyear Wrangler tires. And one thing about them is they are really, really stiff. However, the sidewall detail is quite nice, and they do have a beautiful tread. Just like Danny said, the narrow ones go in the front and the wider ones go in the back. And one thing that's really funny with Billy Carter, he had his own Billy beer that was specially made for him, but he really enjoyed drinking Pap's Blue Ribbon. Finally, we've got this wonderful looking decal sheet from Billy Carter's Redneck Power Pickup. And as you can see, the color registration on this is really quite nice. Of course, Billy Carter ain't apologizing. And uh, there's the Billy Carter Super Service decal, which goes on the side. It's got Redneck Power. I do believe his CB handle was cast iron. And it does say, I can take care of myself, which was a Billy Carter saying. We also have the peanut on here which I do believe is a reference to his brother Jimmy. And then there's a BC for Billy Carter. That completes our look at the Billy Carter Redneck Power Pickup. And I want to thank my good friend James once again for loaning us a model car kit so that we could unbox it, especially a really rare, really strange one like the Billy Carter Pickup. Hey, if you want to check out our model cars for sale, check out this link right here. And if you enjoyed these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And until next time, happy model building.